Q and lost today. So she, I think they should still run with it and ask for, ask for not 25. Okay. Now pause the recording. Okay. So um, I'm going to tell a dad joke, you know, Gigi. So <clears throat> he was reading a book last night on gravity and he couldn't put it down. Uh, that's <laughs> that's <up funny. laughs> okay so um what i want to do is number one make sure you have your worksheets because we do have an activation we'll be doing at the end we did go a little bit long on this morning because uh, once you get into stuff like this uh, it can take a little bit longer to tie things up but uh, if you have to go right at noon feel free that will not um, hurt our feelings at all and um, I'm going to start my screen share here and we will get started and I'll introduce coach Greg okay full screen mode the only thing is like on the TV the the zoom stuff doesn't go to the top it's like right in the middle so we may have to figure something out on that well, on my hand, it was oh was it so it's just maybe on my end then okay so stress and stuck let's dig you out i have been wanting to do uh this training for a long time with coach greg uh number one he uh has a background in this so what was licensed professional <laughs> so it's licensed professional clinical counselor counselor excuse me but they're, now you got me tongue -tied, sorry right? sorry <laughs> so <clears throat> so yes i've been in private practice since 2005 here in the state of new mexico so um my company is called coaches corner and empowerment center of new mexico so coaches corner is the performance fitness part of the business and the empowerment center of new mexico is the uh counseling part of the smokes with the military quite a bit as well and then also but what really got my attention is how he works with me in the kettlebell training aspect and his other clients uh, because uh, you're, you know here you think you're doing a workout but you're actually you're getting training not just physically but mentally so I have overcome so many like blocks things I didn't recognize were there just by working with him in that capacity so I thought it'd be a lot of fun and I'm gonna give uh, his website later at the at the end of the the training but he has a very unique ability to uncover barriers and uh, and it's amazing how much they impact us so that's why we're tag teaming I asked him to do it plus he can tend to be elusive sometimes in public so I wanted to get him out here so you guys can see his personality and who he is all right so we're gonna start with number one the myth um, and that is that stress is caused by events the truth is, is that stress is caused by your perception of those events. And we've had, you know, several trainings where I've touched upon this, but it's like you can have two people going through the exact same uh, circumstances. One thrives, one is barely surviving if they do. I mean, you know, you hear of people that commit suicide or they try to because they cannot cope with what's going on. And so that to me right there is evidence that it's not the events. Now, do we have stressful days because maybe people were rude, something happened at work? Absolutely. But even then, how you respond to it is based on perception, right? So uh, that's the first thing. The second thing is you think 60 to 70,000 thoughts a day. And what researchers have found is 70% are negative. And those are in the subconscious. So your conscious thoughts may be positive, but in the subconscious part, there can be a lot of negative stuff going on and we'll get deeper into that in a minute. But your perceptions are sourced in your sub subconscious scripts and that's good or bad. So you wanna add anything or say anything about the scripts? Um. Not yet. Not yet? Okay. So just remember that. So if you change your perception or your script, which then changes your perception, you'll change your life. I mean, it's amazing. So um, we're going to dig into that a little bit. Okay. The subconscious, and if you, any of you guys watch the promotional video, I likened it to the Titanic. Uh, it's like, The subconscious is like an iceberg, and all of us realize that the part that's hidden is the biggest part. And then sometimes they'll roll, you know, 
but it's still the biggest part is under the water. And so that's what your subconscious is. It's what you do not see. Uh, and it's what is not seen that's bigger. And sometimes you don't know what's under there until you collide with it. And, uh, and so, you know, with, uh, the Titanic, the, the reason I think it fascinates us so much is it could have been totally preventable. 1,500 people did not need to die, but they believed the messaging. The Titanic is invincible. Nothing can sink this ship, not even God, I believe is what was said. You've got uh, Captain Smith, who was very experienced, uh, was given the honor for his last voyage to you know, be on this great ship. And even he got careless in how he dealt with the dangers. And sure enough, they hit the the uh, iceberg at the right angle. That's what happens to us. It's like we can either believe the messaging we're getting or all of a sudden we collide into something that reveals something going on in the unseen that causes damage to relationships, damage to our businesses, uh, damage to even our physical health. Like for example, he knows I can be fiery. Sometimes I have water, right? <laughs> yeah. Boiling usually, but mm -hmm. yeah, I can have water there. Anyway, I, I had a shoulder injury about 27 years ago and he's helped me like get rid of it, but it was hurting me that day. So I get in there and I'm trying to, you know, do it. I think it's a press and um, it was hurting. I said, man, it's hurting. And so you would think like he, you know, he's watching my movements. He sees that nothing's going on there. He said, what are you thinking? Well, I mean, nothing. I mean, you swing the bell, you know, I'm not really thinking of anything. And, but then I was like, well, now I need to think about what I've been thinking about. And sure enough, that week I'd gotten into a little bit of a tiff with someone where I had to say, Hey, can you stop saying that? That's annoying me. And I had tensed up and did not even realize it. And when I went to train, it shows up in my, my physical body. Right. So that's the stuff I'm talking about where he's like, Hey, you're thinking something. You know, and so that's what happened. All of a sudden, my physical body alerted me to a mental loop I was not even aware of, not even aware of. So these things can stop your progress and they can make you feel stressed. Anything? Where you want to go? Yeah. Okay. So scripts are the mental brew that's powerful enough to direct your emotions and your actions. In fact, the word emotion in the Latin means to set in motion. A lot of people, especially C personalities, you guys have heard me talk about this. Uh, a lot of C's think they're very analytical and logical and non-emotional, but even C's emotion will set them on a course. And so even if you don't feel emotional, it does not mean the emotion's not there. And the heart, which is the center of emotion, according to science, will even argue with your brain. If you think, well, I'm not, I'm going to think positive. I'm, you know, I'm not going to think about this. I'm going to stop this. And your heart's like, no, we're not. And so your heart and the emotion behind it will direct your life and your actions. So, <clears throat> so in my work, um, when it comes to dealing with the script, as we call it, or those patterns of thinking that we're trying to break out of, uh, <clears throat> I would say that generally speaking, we know it because it tends to show up in our lives, in our individual lives. There are certain things in our lives that can be a challenge for us, right? So you would know what that is individually, right? So it may not necessarily be the money. Um, your business could be doing fine. Um, maybe your health is doing great, but it tends to attack us in an area, what I call like our Achilles, a place where we have a soft spot where we tend to struggle. And that's tend to be the place where we get caught up in that script that we can't get out of. And so, and that's when we have to find ways to change that pattern of thinking because if we don't, we tend to have the same experiences year after year after year. And I think most people, when we tend to look at our lives, we can say, is this thing something that keeps happening for me? Um, this is an area where it tends to show up for us the most. Mm -hmm. Learn norms become sub subconscious scripts. So you might have been taught them even as a child or even as an adult. Uh, one example I used in the first uh, class this morning was uh, my husband came from a very stable uh, background and that his parents remained married from the time they got married. Uh, I came from a bunch of crazy stepmoms 
and being moved everywhere. So my grid for marriage was not anywhere close to his. Uh, but I had a person in him and still do where if there was a script causing problems, he would call me out on it. And same thing me with him. But it's amazing how an undercurrent, a script like that can cause big problems in business as well as your personal relationships. And I told him the first year we were married, it's like Christmas time. We got our new baby. I want to get pictures, you know, of all of us. And it was like, I asked him to go get a root canal. I mean, it was amazing. And we had our first big fight over taking pictures as a family just in the living room. And I'm like, what is your problem? You know, you're being stupid. And we got in a fight. I think I threw something at him. And, uh, and, and later we realized what he didn't like about it. You know, but at the time he was running on a script. I thought he was being unreasonable, which he was because the script was unreasonable, but you have to uncover it. Uh, in business, uh, you know, I work part-time at Diamonds Evermore. The first, I think it was two months I worked there, I was so tense. I'm like, well, first of all, I get hired in a week, and then the next week, she's gone. She's out of town. I'm like, oh, that's, well, hopefully I don't burn down her building or run off all of her customers, you know, and so she would like try to teach me stuff, and I'm like, I'm taking notes, and I'm trying to learn, but I had this script going on in my head, please don't run her business, please don't run her business, please don't run, you know, so everything she was telling me, it was like blocked by, I don't want to run her business, and then one day, I was listening to Gary Vaynerchuk, and he was basically like, what makes you think, and he was talking about somebody else, what makes you think you're going to come in and run this guy's business when he spent 20 years to build it? You're not all that. So after that, uh, to the heart, I'm like, that's very true. And so I was able to get rid of that script and actually focus on the job and make her money instead of costing her money. So that is a professional setting. It can be something as, um, you know, simple as you're showing a house and this person has, uh, a personality that reminds you of someone that you don't like, or it's a past relationship, and all of a sudden you find yourself struggling to connect, uh, that can be a script or personality, and some people are just jerks, so you may not like them, and that's okay, <laughs> you know, so, but be aware of, and I uh, did mention this this morning, but when your emotional response does not warrant the infraction, when it does not warrant what occurs, that's a sign you got a script. You've just crashed into this uh, iceberg. That's something that? Yeah, absolutely. I agree. I agree. You're awfully quiet this one. Am I'm not I? sure if I like this. Oh, Is I'm there a script going on? Are we good? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Maybe I'm thinking about that pizza. Over there. I don't know. You might be. <laughs> <laughs> I'm tussling with that. I'm having the tyranny of the shoulds. <laughs> I know, I can, I can tell, I can smell it from here. You see, the lid is up, I can. Maybe uh, someone should close that for you, so. No, I'm okay, okay. I, can, I can deal with it. <laughs> That's why I brought my book, I can deal with it. So I love this uh, uh, idea here. Two fish are swimming in a pond. When an older fish starts swimming the other way towards them, when the older fish passes him, he nods and says, good morning, how's the water? The two fish swim for a while before one of them looks to the other and asks, what the hell is water? And that's a lot of what we go through. It's like, why did I react that way? Why did that person say that? Why are they freaking out over that? It all goes into what water they're swimming, swimming in or the mental brew. Now, I do want you to talk about, and if you want to do it later, that's fine. Um, when we get to the next slide, like you did this morning, but our conversation yesterday, what struck me when we were talking about the subconscious is how you basically were saying the subconscious will get you to whatever road, whether that's success or failure. That was so good. Yeah. So when we talk about the subconscious, a lot of times it's like, well, what is that? You know, where is it? and you start to hear a bunch of percentages and how your mind is working. What I like to tell people is simply this, your brain is directed toward definite ends. So it's simply impossible for you not to fail. And what I mean by that is, if you set a course for yourself to achieve certain goals, you're going to develop the habits that you need to have to achieve that goal, right? On the other hand, if you're the person that says, well, I'm not really sure if I want to do that. I don't know if I want to go to the gym or I don't know about this relationship or changing or whatever it is. It's going to put you on another path. 
And let's say that path that you're on, um, it may not get you the results that you want, but it's getting you the results that you're actually thinking about most of the time because it's just simply not possible for us not to make that happen. We're either gonna achieve a goal on one side of the road or you're going to achieve the goal on the other fork in the road. But make no mistake, your brain is going to direct you to whatever ends that you're thinking about most of the time because that's just the way that we are hardwired. You could say in a, another way to look at it is you don't have anything in your life that you did not call into your life. Mm -hmm. You know, now we may not always like the result of it, and that's where we tend to balk. But if you trace your thinking, you will find out that your thinking literally just led you right down that path, even though you might not like the results. It's like this guy, this woman, this circumstance. And then it's like, what were you thinking about mm -hmm. most of the time? Mm -hmm. Because that's exactly what we get, what we think about most of the time. And that gets into the subconscious because, uh, you know, it, it's a data. The subconscious takes data. Uh, the subconscious does not make decisions. It just executes the data you put in it, and it only understands present tense. So, uh, you know, it, that's why vision boards can be so, you know, effective. But the present tense thing is very important because, you know, the concept of faith the concept of belief, you know? Mm. So when you have a concept of faith, you have the concept of belief, you know, being a pastor, I'm just going to whip that card out. It's, you know, now faith is, it's a present tense reality. And yet when people always put things into the future, guess what? It's always in the future. But when you take a picture with conviction of what you're going after, and now you know it's yours, you will get there, good or mm -hmm. bad good or bad. Mm -hmm. And so that's where the scripts can come in. And it's so important uh, to uh, you know, recognize them and make the necessary changes in the subconscious, which we'll talk about. But here's one, and I, I bet you guys have done this because I'm gonna speak a lot, you know, realtor because you guys are realtors the, dominantly in here. Okay. So Tammy, y'all know Tammy Waters. Okay, she, when I first started working with, for her, um, I went there one week, and she had this envelope and she had opened it up that morning and she was amazed. And, I, and I, she's like, I got to show you this. And so it was an exercise. I think she might've done with Ke Keller Williams years ago. Cause I started working with her in 2012 and it was where you write your year goals, you know, dream big, but not so big. There's no way, but don't dream so small that you can do it the next day, you know, pretty much. And so she had written out these goals. She goes, you got to see this. And she hands me the letter and, you know, I'd like to think it was my expertise, you know, with her. And that's why we achieved mm -hmm. her goals, but I hadn't worked that long with her. And, uh, and so anyway, I read them in every single thing she had accomplished and more. And the exercise was you write it out. And then a year later, that person was going to mail it to you. And she had received it in the mail and realized she surpassed her, her goals. Mm -hmm. And I did the same thing. And the same thing happened, except one area where I did not win the battle with my subconscious and I did not achieve that goal. And so it's, it's the brain will go toward what you focus in on, but it also has a natural negative bias uh, to keep you alive. That, that's what it's all, all the brain's concerned with is making sure you don't die. And so that's why we recognize angry faces or threats more quickly, why we overestimate threats and underestimate opportunities, and why we overlearn from bad experiences. And so just a little side note, this is why I'm such a, uh, um, I guess you say squeaky will when it comes to smiling. You know, just something as simple as smiling, because that person that doesn't know you, that's coming to you also has scripts. They have past experiences with people in your profession. You know, uh, there are certain professions people don't trust right off the bat. Anybody in sales that, you know, right off the bat, you're not to be trusted. And so if you're not smiling or they feel like they've walked into the DMV, you're going to have a problem. And so you want to make sure that immediately you're eliminating that threat response. And for some people, if they feel you're not friendly and you're not smiling at them, they can even get aggressive in their stance and their behavior. And that's because their brain's looking for those signals saying this person's safe. And it starts with a smile every time. And it's so funny, certain personalities like C personalities, they're like, well, I don't feel like smiling. 
And it's like, well, that doesn't matter. Practice on your cat. You know, practice at Walmart. Well, now we have to wear masks. Practice wherever you can practice. Now, uh, they've also discovered, and I don't know if any of you are prone to anxiety or depression, but this may help you to know this, that negative thought patterns, now we're into the habitual thinking, okay, play a big role in causing and worsening uh, depression and anxiety. And it literally changes the physiology of the brain. Uh, the brain's elastic. It can change, uh, but just know that. So if you get into a loop, that's causing anxiety or depression, you know how hard it is to get out. It becomes a habit. And uh, when I did for my first public speaking, have any of y'all done the 23andMe DNA test? Okay, um, I talked about this, the public speaking. Um, I did it and I actually have in my DNA uh, a phobia of public speaking, which I find ironic because I do it all the time. And um, so, the very first time I had to publicly speak, I made myself so anxious. I was sick for four days after I could not stop it. I could not get my mind out of that loop. And we're going to teach you how to, to stop those loops. But negative thoughts lead to more negative thoughts. And over time, it literally rewires your brain. Got some stuff? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so if you, which one? Go back to the other one again. That one. So here on the screen you can see back there this is where a lot of the the challenging work really comes in because you'll probably find that the things that we're most sensitive about are the ones that are very deepest and they have the strongest scripts right so if you take um let's just take an example um every year we have a new year's resolution right and um and every year we set out to achieve some goal. Well, if you fail um, two or three years in a running, every time that New Year's resolution comes along again, you may tell your friends that you're ready to go to the gym with them, but you've already lost already, right? Because you're probably thinking, you know, it's like, I'm probably not going to make it. Somewhere along the line, something is going to happen to me. Well, guess what happens, right? I mean, it always does. We don't really have to be geniuses on that, but you have to know if you keep telling yourself that you're not able to make something happen, you keep um, visualizing or internalizing some sort of negative outcome, that's what we experience, right? Because that's what we're calling to ourselves. Again, it doesn't matter your workplace, your home, your children, somebody somewhere in your environment is going to bring that to you because that's what we're focusing on all the time. And so we really have to change the way we think about things because we actually create depression just in the thoughts that we have, which is different now from having a situation that is depressing. Like, right. you know, we suffer a loss or we go through some kind of traumatic experience. That's a very different phenomenon than when we're ruminating on something all the time and we can't get that thought out of our head. Okay, I just and do you it. think that trauma and things like that can lead to though, uh, habitual thoughts that can take you into a place you didn't need to go? Yes, they can and they often do if we don't do any work on it, but I just kind of like want to make the statement that if something happens in our lives and it's really traumatic and you feel a little bit depressed and anxious, you're going to have a period of time where you may feel that but that's gonna be in the context of what that situation is. You get six months past that, which we would call like in clinical terms, an adjustment period. Once you get past that six months, then you have to ask yourself, why are you still thinking about that? And mm -hmm. how are you using that thought that you're having in your mind? What purpose does it serve? Yeah, and like he said in the morning class, like if you make a new year's resolution, go to the gym, your subconscious knows you mm -hmm. and will give you 60 days. <laughs> It's, uh, <laughs> it's, 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 it's like the parent. I think that was the example yeah. I used. It's like a parent. So, you know, you're, you're watching your children and you correct certain behaviors and they say, yes, mom, yes, dad, but you know your children, right? So you go inside, you close the door and you're looking out the curtain and guess what they do? They go and do it again and then you go out there and catch them, but you knew that was going to happen. I'm saying that when it comes to the subconscious, it knows you. So if you set out to change a behavior, you're going to have to put something in place to ensure that that behavior, that new behavior takes root. Otherwise, your subconscious is saying, it's like, we've been here before. 
Mm -hmm. You've been doing this for years. Go right ahead. I'll be waiting for you at the same exact time because your speech will start to change and they start to reconnect. And the next thing you know, you quit. You've done that other behavior that you said you wouldn't because again, you have to put something in place to be. And we're going to give you guys the, the how on that. Um, and the other thing that his point brings out, and I learned this when I used to do personal training as well, and people would reach certain plateaus uh, in their training. They're, you know, I mean, it's like, why can't we get past this certain thing? And I began to listen to what they were saying. And it's like, you know, I can't ever get the last five pounds off, or, you know, I always get to this point and then this happens or whatever it is. And that's mm -hmm. when I started studying how the, if you say with conviction and have that, uh, then your subconscious will actually fight you. So if you have a health goal, but you have conviction that you can't ever reach it, it will actually set you up because it only takes data in and then it executes it. And so uh, it's very important to change those scripts, which again, we're gonna show you guys how to do it. But I wanted to talk to you about two types. Uh, the first one's ripples. And to me, these are actually the most dangerous uh, because they're so subtle. They're the ones that play in the background and they seem normal. Uh, and this is where having trusted people in your life that will come to you and say, hey, when you do this behavior, it's hurting this relationship. Or you, I'm sure you've uh, all heard of people that they achieve success and then they crash down and lose everything. And it's because they have scripts going on, you know, especially if it's repetitive behavior. But these seem so normal, guys. And, uh, and it's like background noise that you no longer hear. Uh, the other one are waves. And so these are scripts that come crashing down and they cause mental and emotional distress. Now you're feeling the pain. But you know, one of the most powerful motivators for change is actually uh, aspiration versus pain. If you can tap into who you wanna be, would you agree yes, with that? I do. If you can tap into who you wanna be and create that vision of yourself, that will be more powerful than you being motivated by pain. So for example, I mean, we could take it back to physical health. My knees hurt, my back hurt. I know I need to lose weight. I, I'm borderline diabetes. That rarely sticks, okay? But when people have a vision of who they want to be, now you've got the aspiration and it's a more powerful motivating force. So one of the first questions coach asked me, uh, because I've been doing physical fitness since 2011, but I wanted to take it up another notch. And he said, what do you want? And I, I might've had to think about it a little bit, mm -hmm. but I basically was like, I want to defy aging. I, I want to be just as strong, if not stronger in my nineties. Mm -hmm. I don't think d aging is a disease. I think it's a choice. And so that's what we're working toward mm -hmm. and it's, and it's working, but that's an aspiration versus you know, maybe a pain point of, well, I can't seem to get strength when I want it. That's a factor, but my overall goal and aspiration is to be 90 years old, no cane, no walker, driving my 1970 Chevelle Supersport uh, 427 <laughs> and being buried in it, you know, eventually. Um, so these, these two scripts, uh, the, the subtle ones can be difficult to recognize. Uh, and so I put on the back of your uh, worksheets, 10 of the most common negative thought loops for you to look at in your own time and maybe, you know, uh, circle some, check some, star some that you want to focus in on and work on. And I also put the website uh, to the article that I took these from because I literally just copied and pasted. It's a really good uh, worksheet. But again, if your emotional response does not match, then um, you will definitely want to uh, see what is going on here. Why is this ripple now a wave? And so one of the um, examples I want to give you guys really quick, and then I want to read a statement that um, Coach Greg had that was so profound uh, in the morning session. Uh, when we had a training here, uh, gosh, probably about, how long have I been doing the Fast 45s? Like two or three years? This might be our third year. Um, that We had homework. And I've talked about this in previous training, but we had homework. So I got with my friend and we had to discuss some obstacle, some professional obstacle we were facing. And then we would work together to overcome it. Okay. 
So I asked her to go first and it was a personality issue. So we get all that figured out. She's like, okay, good. And then she said, well, what, what's your problem? And the funny thing about deep personalities is often we don't know we have problems. Um, we have a high stress tolerance, uh, but everybody else feels it. So I'm like, I'm going through my files. And I'm like, and so I just like kind of grabbed, you know, well, I don't want to do live events. And with me and Ernie had started talking about doing these fast 45s and the theme of the little record player and all that stuff. And, and, um, she's like, why? And on the end, I'm thinking, I don't know. I just, you know, pulled that out of a file. So I'm sitting there and all of a sudden I can see what I'm wearing. I can see where I was mm. living. Uh, I saw the house decorated of my 11th birthday party where no one came, mm. which is devastating to an 11 year old. Right. And I'm even tearing up. D's don't tear up guys. You know, that's not what we do. And I'm like, Oh my gosh. And I'm, you know, and she's like, man, that, I mean, that seems to be powerful. You're having a response. Like I know. And so I went home and I did the five whys. you know, I've taught you guys the five whys. I have a podcast where you can learn it on how to uh, stop self sabotage. So I did the five whys and I realized it was a marketing problem. I marketed my birthday party to the wrong group of people because I wanted to be the popular kid. And then I realized I was basically a jerk and dissed my friends. So I had to deal with that too. But mm. all of a sudden it went from being a value statement to a marketing problem. You know what I mean? It took the sting out of it. We launched the Fast 45s and we've been doing them ever since. That was a professional example. When I had mono and I was sick for three years, um, every little thing I did became, okay, am I going to get sick again? Am I going to get sick again? Am I going to get sick again? And it was such a strong mental loop. It took me a year to break out of it. So some are like quick, some take a while. And that's one reason I like training so much is because I couldn't move for three years. So exercise means a lot, you know? So I want to go through the steps and then he has some great ones, but his statement this morning, he said, our script scripts our mentors for us. I thought that was really good. Yeah. If I don't know if you want to elaborate. Yeah, I will. So um, everything that we think has the opportunity to be able to teach us. Now it just depends on who you are as a person, whether or not if you can actually accept, accept that. But the idea is that um, we always have the opportunity to learn. And when you understand exactly how you are thinking, you get a chance to learn from that. So uh, just to touch on the ripple a little bit. So the ripple is, as she said, you know, it's a small thing, but it's really a large one because it's the ripple that ends up putting us in situations in our lives that produces a wave, if you will. So I used a personality this morning. I said, somebody has sort of like a rough personality. When you see them, they're always kind of like rough. But one day they actually offend the wrong person. And that person tells two or three other people. And then all of a sudden, it just happens that the group comes together and said, you know what, we've actually been dealing with this in his or her personality now for a long time. And I just don't really like that. And then somebody else in the group says, you know, I agree. So what are we going to do? But this started with a ripple. It started with something that the person says, well, you know, that's just my personality. Just deal with it. Well, one day the group comes back and says, look, we're not really sure how to tell you this, but your personality is hard to take. So we're just going to stop working with you for a while now, or we just don't want to work with you anymore, period. So depending on where you are in your life, that could be impacting your emotional, your family relationships. Mm -hmm. But since we are all in business in this room, so now that ripple has impacted your business. Somebody says, you know, this person is really smart, but they're not really good people persons. So that may not sound like a whole lot, but all of a sudden people realize that they start retreating from you. Now people, are no longer frequenting your business and you're trying to figure out what's happening and before you know it your business is in a place that you're not able to recover and you're asking people to help you but what you don't remember is that six months ago somebody was trying to tell you yeah. that you have to pay attention to how you treat other people where you think they should accept it from you because that's just your personality those ripples have now created a wave and now you have put yourself in a position where you're isolated. 
and now you're hurting. Now, coming back to the mentor, if you can stop yourself from getting to that point, you're sitting down and it's like, you know what? I probably shouldn't have said that to that person. It's like, wow, that wasn't really nice. So when you catch up with the person the next time, it's like, you know what? I realize. Jan. Jan, wow. Um, I was in a rush this morning and I probably wasn't in the right place. I apologize for being a little bit rough. Now, when I come back to you, you probably didn't think about it in that moment. But now all of a sudden it's like, you know what? I'm actually glad he did. And in that moment, now you're going to go and tell somebody, it's like, you know what? That guy came back to me and I had forgot about it, but he let me know that he did something that was kind of offensive or he, at least he thought it was, but you appreciate that I acknowledged that I had done something that I didn't think was appropriate, even though you probably didn't think that much about it. But when I came back to you, I delivered something to you that made an impression on your mind. And what I just did was I just changed the whole course that I might have been on. Yeah. And just business note, uh, if you make a mistake or if you have someone that gets upset with you, uh, all people want you to do is fix it. They don't want excuses. They don't want to hear how busy you are, your schedule or anything. They just want you to fix it. Here's the, the pot of gold that if you fix a mistake with a customer, well, you actually have 90% uh, more loyalty with them than someone where you never made a mistake. So that's what's really neat is uh, that lost opportunity of not fixing something can cost you not only that person, but everybody they tell. But if you fix it well, they'll tell everybody, you know, yeah. I just had that experience, but we don't have time to get into my wills. <laughs> uh, to talk about that. Well, I've got a podcast, podcast on that one, but okay. So on recognizing these things, the first and I'm getting unstuck. The first thing is recognizing the script. And for some of you, that may be enough. Once you recognize it, uh, that's all you need. You're now empowered with the knowledge and you can approach things in a different way. Uh, the five whys, again, is my favorite exercise if you want to go deeper. Uh, number two is challenge your thinking. Uh, do you really believe what you're thinking? Uh, was it inherited? See, some, some of us inherit uh, perspectives. And then retrain your subconscious. And uh, Coach Greg has some really good stuff on this. But uh, vision boards, uh, words of conviction are great. But like you said this morning, and I, I do this, I have to purposely stop at my vision board and just look. If not, it just becomes a part of the decor and I walk by. So I want him to share his steps to help you in that one. Uh, number four is be kind to yourself like you would a friend. Uh, but sometimes kindness is translated into ruthlessness with yourself not allowing yourself to continue to go down that path. Uh, and I share the helicopter technique a lot, but that's where, let's say you have a problem and you're not sure how to approach it. Well, imagine yourself in a helicopter with your friend and both of you are looking down the problem, except it's your friend's problem. And you're looking down the problem and you give them advice for that problem. Well, you need to take that advice. There's your answer. And so sometimes that's kindness of what would I tell my best friend if they were in the same situation? We did that to Marley this morning. Well, what would you tell a best friend? Just do it. <laughs> that's what she said. <laughs> and then stay on top of it. So the mean hot dog. Um, this is uh, very interesting. I'm just going to show you this part that I drew it out uh, this morning. But it kind of looks like an AK, um, you know rifle, assault uh, rifle, yeah. but it's not. So <laughs> this right here is like a little tree. Okay. And see this really deep, dark, um, line that is an ingrained thought. Your thoughts look like trees in your mind and the ingrained ones go really, really deep. And then they create around them a myelin sheath to protect that nerve. Okay. Well, let's say you start working on a different way of thinking. So you've got this lighter little line here and you're working on it. You're doing what you need to do physically. That I call it a mean hot dog because it looks like a hot dog. If you Google it, will actually attack your new thought in your brain physically. And so no, and part of being kind to yourself is your brain is literally wired. It's literally wired. And when you first start changing thoughts, 
the old way of thinking will attack the new. There's nothing wrong with you, but that's just what's happening. And so if you want to share how to, you know, your steps from this morning, I'd love that. Yeah. So I just want to just take off these two, the ring, and I'm just going to use this water bottle. So every time you think a thought, you reinforce it. So if we use a, just a training program, every time you train, you get in better shape. It doesn't matter what that activity is. If you engage in it, um, you should improve. So if you, in terms of thinking, you have a tendency to think negative thoughts, the, the sales, they continue to grow in size. Mm. So when the thought first hit your mind, it was this size. So by the time you kept ruminating over that thought over the years, I'm not good enough, nobody loves me, I don't know why things are keep happening to me. Now all of a sudden, the dominating thought in your mind is that there is something that is wrong with you, that you are undeserving, right? So how do you change that? Well, I think vision boards are great. I think, you know, affirmations are great. But one of the things I said this morning, um, you're living in a, a life that is 24 seven. We're always on the go. You might get up in the morning, you're running late. You run out of the house, you forget to stop and look at your vision board and take that one minute that you would normally do. Your day was hectic. You have family, children, whatever. So when you come home, you're tired. You got to feed people. You have to get ready for the next day. You forget to look at it again. So before you know it, you might have one or two days where you forget to look at your vision board, but your subconscious mind is never off duty. It's always working. So whether you are just sitting there watching television, you're watching something, something is always going into your head and it's going to influence right along the way that you tend to think about things. So what do I ask people to do? I have one of these. Now this is not a diary for me, right? But what I call like my desire journal or what do you want? So what I write in this book every morning is the things that I want to achieve. And I use it as a scaling um, system as well too. So on a scale of one to 10, how badly do you want something? So one of the best ways to get your mind going uh, in the right direction, if you don't feel at least an eight, don't write it down, okay? What you want to put in the book is something that you are going to be thinking about all of the time right? Because that's how you change these. Now you switch them. So you first started off and you said, I'm going to grow my business. I'm going to provide a great service in this community. And you wake up and you are committed to do everything that you can to do that. But you also help yourself out because you know the memory or excuse me, the momentum of past habits are always waiting for us, right? So you put in place a procedure that helps mm -hmm. you to develop confidence, to help you to start thinking a certain way much more consistently. Now, all of a sudden, you've reached a point that when stress comes, you're not thinking about the worst thing that could happen, but you're now saying, well, wait a minute, where's an option? Mm -hmm. You start to think See in terms of an option. Exactly, mm -hmm. which means now your subconscious mind is supporting you on the other fork in the road, which is, you know what, there's another option because the subconscious mind doesn't miss anything. So if it can be perceived by any of the five senses, you're going to pick it up. So whether or not, if you know you pick it up or not, you're going to pick that up. So you probably don't pay attention to everything that you passed on the way to work, but your subconscious mind recorded every bit of that. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it shows up in a dream, you know, mm -hmm. um, deja vu, right? Um, but, um, so you want to put yourself in a situation that you can anchor a new habit because that's what we're talking about. You need another habit. Writing things down and then writing them down in blue ink. Okay. Mm -hmm. Because blue stimulates your memory right? And what you want to do is you want to get used to the things that you write down. You want them to be a part of your memory. So everything that I have in this book, I can actually just speak it. I know right what it is, right in the order, 
And this is just one of the things that I do in the morning, but yes. And on top of that, you know, when you pick up the blue pen, it's reinforcing the habit. Of, exactly. And what I love about this idea when he shared this morning is he said, you always start with desire. Yeah. And that's aspiration. So you're actually, it's, it's, to me, it's more enjoyable journaling versus writing out your problems and how life sucks and that person sucks. You know, it's like you're actually dreaming in a way. You're daydreaming. Uh, but you're going to make it a reality. You know what I mean? So you're tapping into the aspiration right off the bat. Um, and then the other thing you said this morning was, what are you willing to do? It has to be active. Right. So everyone in the room is in some form of business, right? So that means that you already have certain habits. You know, there are certain things that you want to be able to do. We all want to be better at business. We want to be able to achieve certain goals. So you're going to be willing to do those things. But as we said earlier, when it comes to the script, the script tends to reside in the areas where we have challenges, right? Mm -hmm. So the mm -hmm. things that we do good are generally not a problem for us. It's the area of our lives that we're saying, man, I want to fix that. So, you know, um, you pick an area of your life, right? Because that's something that we're already aware of. Does it have something to do with your health? Is it your business? Is it the way you deal with your customers? Is it your relationships? Do you feel disempowered? Whatever it is, there's something that you know you need to change. Well, how are you gonna go back and change that? Well, when you write it down, and this is what I'm going to say, what are you willing to do? If you want to change a pattern that's been persistent, you have to have something that's equally as powerful to change it. Mm -hmm. And this is why yeah. for me, I always start with the concept of desire. What do you want? <coughs> because once you start to focus on what you want, you stop thinking about the things you don't want. Yep. And if you stop thinking about the things that you want, you'll start thinking about those things you don't want. Because again, we're talking about something that has been recording your history um, since you've been on the planet, mm -hmm. right? I mean, yeah. unfortunately, that's what we all have to deal with. Those thoughts are with us, your upbringing, your everything that makes up our life, our culture, our upbringing, our conditioning, where we grew up, the people who had the most influence on our lives, all of those things are in our head, right? And so when you get to the point where you say, I want to make my mark on the world, then how do you change it? How do you change the behavior that has plagued you, right? How do you change that behavior? You have to have something that's equally as powerful. And that's why, to me, desire is the starting point of all achievement. Because something that inspires you tends to help motivate you to develop the other characteristics that will allow you to succeed. Persistence, self-discipline, the ability to go the extra mile the ability to see your service as really a positive thing that reward to you the things that you're actually seeking. Um, but you have to put yourself in the position to be able to do that. And I think that's where you said you have to not only retrain yourself, but you have to challenge yourself. And the challenge is, is to develop the habit. So do you like to write things down? For some people, they like to do that. Can you make yourself go to the vision board? Can you make yourself say that aspiration every morning um whatever it is you have to do it because the minute you let up on it and it doesn't become a habit you'll quickly be back into the same place you were before yeah yeah and then when you write uh it changes the physiology of your brain too not typing but writing okay so um to finish up because we have uh five minutes i want y'all to write down the script you need to work on but uh coachescorner.com uh Myself, Kyle, we're both um, clients of Coach Greg. And, uh, and oh, Kim, <laughs> all right, didn't know. Yeah. And uh, I built his website, by the way. So um, We're just a date waiting to happen. I'm just waiting. She just got me waiting on the right <laughs> <now. laughs> And then um, next uh, training, I forgot to do this this morning. I'm going to talk about how to hire the right people. Yeah, so if you've ever ha hired or been a part of a team where they hired the wrong person, you know the havoc it can produce. So I'm going to take some of my tips and tricks. I don't think Greg and I need to come to that because obviously we hired the right person.
actually help us. <laughs> yeah. So actually, I cut my teeth on Flash Talker and then you. So on this topic, but it's one of my favorite topics, and you can end stress, high turnover, and the cost of hiring the wrong people. So it's really going to be a good one. Now, here's what I want you to do on your worksheet I want you to write down one negative thought loop you're dealing with now. And if you have a rough time finding it, just think of the last time you were upset. It's, it's amazing how it works, especially when you're under stress and you have to shine a light on it. That's mm -hmm. when it really is like, ah, you're not going to say that. <laughs> it's like, no, not here. You know, it's, it's, it's amazing how that works. And for you guys on uh, Zoom, if you want to go ahead and write down yours. And then uh, I would like a couple of people to share one if it's not too private. So um, let's do the live first and then we'll have one from the, the Zoom. Did someone say all right? The subconscious at, oh. is at work, right? The subconscious at work is like, I don't want to go first. <laughs> I'll share mine. Okay. My relationship with my husband, it just seems like we're always on the phone. That's the Okay. So, something's wrong. Well, now we're getting into something deep, right? Did we hit the, is, is, this, is this where we hit the mute button like we did this morning? It's like, I can answer a question, but we might want to hit that mute button. <laughs> you know, yeah, we hit the, we hit we the did. mute. We, we, we muted the, everybody yeah, out. Yeah, we hit the mute things. button this morning. And, you know, I don't mind having something to say, but I'm, but respectfully. Um, that is a big one, but I would, I would say one thing where I would start just because I do a lot of, marriage mentoring a lot uh, as a pastor, not in a professional, because I'm not an LPCC. Um, oh, you got it. <laughs> but uh, I always start with personalities. I always go with personalities first. That, that's where I start. And if you want to have a phone call, conversation, you just let me know, because nine times out of 10 in my work, and I'm talking marriages where there, the divorce papers were drawn up, uh, it was, uh, probably like 95% personality and just not understanding how the other person thinks and expecting the other person to think like you or vice versa. And so, um, yeah, that, that'd be a big one, but, uh, that that's where I would start. Well, I do realize a lot of it is personality and I really get when I just don't plan. I said, do you have trouble thinking by yourself? Now you're getting into some core stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Give me a call. Let let's let's dissect it. So yeah. Some. I do. Oh, some. I do. I do know about that. Yeah. I, but to me, it's like, if people don't understand how they're designed as a foundation, then you get into the, the triggers, then you get into the mentalities that have been developed. It's a waste of time. And uh, uh, so, um, yeah, I always go into personalities first. And usually you got polar opposites of married. And so a typical combination is you've got a D married to an S or vice versa, and they don't think anything alike, and the D's rude and insensitive, and the S is too touchy and not straightforward, and before you know it, let's get divorced. Yeah, so. Can I, can, 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 can I go in there real quick? So one of the things is, <clears throat> in, in situations like this, I like everybody to be able to maintain their own sense of power within any kind of relationship mm -hmm. dynamic. But I'm also an advocate for being able to trust the process of dealing with vulnerability, but not seeing it as a weakness, right? right. So sometimes when we have two people who are equally strong, um, we cannot get past you. Mm. You and you. So when I hear the word you, the first thing I, this is what comes to my mind when I see, you know, and 
So what would happen if I said, you know what, um, we're missing here. Um, I want you to have whatever it is that you need from me. Can you tell me what that is? Mm, that's good. Okay. And um, now you could be back in the back of your mind. It's like, don't get, you know, but don't give me that same statement but you really want the, that person to tell you something that's deeper because most of the time what we're having conflict over is something that's buried that we don't know how to address so we tend to fight to protect the positions that we're in so this is why i'm saying if i start with the fact that i know you have strength right so i can expect respect that and i do too but i'm gonna take the lead and say look um it means a lot for me to be with you and to have you happy and if we're missing, I just want to know what do you need and what does that look like and how can I help you? Because I want you to be able to give that to me. So now all of a sudden, now we're not fighting and now we're sitting back and it's like, oh, she just asked me what I actually really need. Maybe I haven't thought about that because I'm so busy trying to defend a position that I probably should have left a long time ago. Yeah. That's good. Yeah, allowing influence. Mm -hmm. And even with, you know, clients. I mm -hmm. mean, if you're not careful, you can give them what you think they need. Yeah. And we're not listening. It's kind of like how many of you have gone to get a haircut oh. and you tell them how you wanted it cut. Mm -hmm. And then you walk out, you know, I walked out once looking like Diana Ross. And so <laughs> I'm like, wow. That's every day. Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> okay. Does anyone else have one they want to share? Okay, so Rachel, if you could just share yours real quick and then we'll go ahead and end. Sure. Um, so one of the things I stress about relatively often is that I am prioritizing myself and not my family enough. So, you know, with my life decisions and things like that. <laughs> yep. And uh, what was the truth though that you came, you, you, you had this morning? So I should probably try to remember that they've always encouraged me to do what makes me happy and to that, that I am supporting them and being there for them in different ways. And I don't have to necessarily be physically present all the time to be able to do that. And I think that's important. And again, it goes to perception. We have a perception of how we think people think we should act and what we should be for them and how we should be even for ourselves. And sometimes that's way off base and we can cause ourselves unnecessary stress. Yeah. So thank you, Rachel. Anything, guys? I mean, I don't know if you thought it'd be a Dr. Phil show, Dr. Phil. <laughs> <laughs> but um, to me, this stuff, you cannot separate personal and professional. They, they just go together and just knowing these things and how they impact both areas is so important. So um, blue pen, get you some stuff to journal and make sure it's aspirational. And I plan on getting me a journal uh, today. So do you have any questions or any thoughts? Uh, yes, uh, under my blog at Sherry Ann Wilson, uh, that's Sherry with an I and with an E, I think it's on the page, but also it is a podcast. So if you go to work your biz like a boss, um, you'll find it. All right, guys. Bye, Zoom family. Bye. Bye. Thank you, guys. Uh.